Hello everyone, Sebastian here from MobiFlight. In this video tutorial, I'm going to explain how to use the new direct and native Xplane integration that comes with MobiFlight, because with version 9.5, we're now able to use data refs and also commands directly in your MobiFlight configurations. And that makes setting up MobiFlight with Xplane like super, super simple, um, way better than it was uh, with XPY PC where a lot of you have been struggling. So um, yeah, in this video now, we're going to take a look. Let's do it. Let's get a Mobi flight and explain started. And I'll show you how to configure it. Before we start MobiFlight and also Xplane, I'm going to install a Xplane plugin called Data Ref Tool. And uh, it's super useful because it allows us to look up the names of the data refs and also the commands that we would like to use with MobiFlight. Um, so head over to data, dataref.tool.com. The download is free. It's a zip file and it contains a folder that you have to drop into your plugins folder of your Xplane installation. So for me, that is under, uh, that's on my E drive under a flight sim Xplane and then uh, resources plugins. And that's where you drop this folder in data ref tool version 2.0. And you can verify that it was the correct folder by opening it, looking inside, there's a 64 folder that itself then contains the plugin. So that's looking good. So now we're all set and we can start MobiFlight and we can also launch Xplane. Okay, so I have MobiFlight started and Xplane is running in the background and I'm going to show how to read a data ref. So we are creating the data ref read example here as an output config. And I'll click on edit and I'll choose the new variable type Xplane data ref. And you can see that we have this very simple, minimalistic uh, data ref entry field. So here I can provide MobiFlight with the data ref name that I would like to read from the sim. At the moment, it's super simple. There's no fancy list to choose from, but I'm currently already working on an improved version. In the meantime, what we're going to do from the plugins menu, we can select the data ref tool that we have installed earlier. And then when you click on the search item there, then you will see that there's a little uh, window coming up that allows us to see all the data refs and filter the long list of data refs and commands by using this uh, search form. We, for example, if we wanted to uh, look up the heading field, uh, sorry, the heading value or maybe the com value, then you can type in com one and it will filter the list uh, by uh, com one so that we only see the ones that have something to do with com one and it's still a long list. So there are some further options right now. For example, here I clicked by accident on a uh, data uh, ref. So now we're seeing data. Now it's also the commands when I click again. And here the second last uh, button is uh, allows me to filter on only those that are currently changing. So if we put it into uh, data refs here and only the changing ones. And if you now interact with uh, anything in the cockpit, if you make any, some change, so now we can see this list uh, will bring up some entries and those are the ones that are currently changing. So um, from this list, I'm going to pick the 833 uh, standby frequency. So that one contains all the six digits uh, of my current frequency. At the moment, it's 122.800. And uh, as you can see, there is a copy name button. So I will um, click on the copy name and then I'll, I'll just drop it in here. 
and uh, I'll confirm with OK, and then I'll acti activate the 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 config line. I put MobiFlight into run mode, and you can see immediately the flight sim value now shows one two two eight zero zero, which is pretty cool because that's very very simple compared to the XPUI PC approach. Um, that is really really straightforward. So I'll also show how fast this is updating. You see, I'll interact here. I turn the button and instantly, I cannot really make out any delay. The value shows as an updated value inside of MobiFlight. And that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. And very, very simple. Okay, I will use a different data ref to write to first because the com uh, data ref is a little bit tricky. Uh, so let's take the heading bug or sorry, the heading, the autopilot heading setting. Let's look up something with heading. Uh, where's the heading bug? It's in the middle console, I believe. Yeah. So uh, when I turn the heading bug here in the cockpit, I can see that there's a couple of variables showing as changed. So let's try the first one of these. Let's create a new data ref for reading first. All right. And then we'll copy the value the name, sorry, over to our explain data ref input field. We'll drop it in there, activate the output config, and we see that we're reading a value. Our heading is 001, but the output value is currently saying 15. So I might have picked uh, the wrong value. Okay, so what's the next one up there in the list? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, this one that says mag it. That looks better. Let's copy that name and paste it in here. Bam, and immediately the value changes, 10, 10. So this fits the heading setting. Well, that's cool. Now we have the correct value or data ref name. And now that we know this, we can actually go copy it. And then we're going to use the same data ref name in our input configuration. Let's switch to the inputs tab and create a new config. I also activate it right away, right away. And then we'll use my radio module because it has a dual encoder on it. And then I'll pick one of the encoders like this. And then the action type is going to be explain data ref slash command. So this allows us to, again, use the same uh, data ref name there. And then as a value that we're going to update when we're dialing to the left, that's the on left uh, event. Then we are using the dollar sign as a reference to the current value. And we are going to say minus one because yeah, when we dial to the left, the heading heading value should go, uh, should decrement. And then we can copy and paste this onto the on right tab. And there I just add plus one and that's it. So on left is dollar minus one, on right is dollar plus one. And with this, we're all set and we can give this a shot. Let's see if it works. Oops, and I can see nothing is happening. I believe actually I, I remember that uh, I think that there is a wire loose on, on this encoder. So I'll show real quick of how to best troubleshoot this. Let's turn on logging and then log level to debug. Let's click OK. And now we can see that these events should show. And yeah, uh, sure enough. I have to switch over to a different encoder, the kilohertz one. So now this is working correctly. Cool, and now you can see that also the heading value in the sim is changing accordingly to our configuration. And well, that was also quite easy. Okay, so now we know how to write to a data ref and uh, the syntax might also look intuitive, but it is also limited in uh, some situations. So let's duplicate this and prepare for the other option, the command. And uh, actually that I'm thinking about it, I would like to point out a problem with writing to the data refs first. So let's, uh, for example, think about the heading. Yeah, so three, four, five. If we are incrementing now, once we reach 360, it will 
wrap over and we're just adding and subtracting one for every input uh, that we're making. So explain for the heading data ref is kind of taking care for us to make sure that the value wraps uh, correctly. So now I'm going back and you see we're approaching the zero and now we're back to 351. That's cool, but I can show you that, for example, with the data ref that we had been using before with the COM1, actually there we will see that there's going to be a problem. So let's duplicate this real quick and say data ref write com one megahertz, and then we'll go here and we'll change in uh, sorry we'll change the data ref to the frequency eight three three, and now since this is a six digit value the megahertz are the thousands so we have to take off one thousand copy this to the right drop it, and uh, now add one thousand, okay. So this now uh, will will work, at least it seems, because when I start now to use my encoder, and if we take a close look at the COM1 frequency, I can actually dial beyond 136 megahertz, which is not a valid COM frequency range. And that's what I meant is kind of something that you would now have to take care of in your Mobifly transformation logic, um, so that this is not going to happen. You can do this with the built-in functions, but using the commands in this case, for example, is way more straightforward. So let's create the COM1 for megahertz. I will also use a different encoder that I have uh, on my radio. So I'll just use the one for COM2. Nice, and then I'll take as an input type now I will use command. And now we have to find out what the correct command is. Right now the list was filtered on data refs. Now I change this to, to com. And when I use the com button here, the knob to interact with the, or to change the frequency, then we can see if we uh, filter on, if we use the second filter button there, um, we can now see that these commands show up in that list. So we can see all the commands that are currently in use or has been triggered, but these ones are the ones that are recently triggered. So um, it says something about inner or outer down and up. So it's kind of obvious that the outer uh, knob is the big one and the inner one is the, the small one. So I will go with outer down and I'll just copy it over and then I do the same thing as before. I copy the entire tab uh, on left and I'll paste it onto the on right tab. And now I can also just edit the name here, outer up, okay. I'll make sure that I deactivate the other data ref right example so that, does, that this does not interfere with each other. And now I can actually give it a try and I can turn my encoder to the left and you saw that immediately the COM1 frequency has uh, gone down. Now we're at 121, decimal 665. And you can see also that this wraparound that, that we had a problem with earlier is now working just right out of the box. So in many circumstances, it's uh, really easier to use a command because then you do not have to worry about the um these these uh, these kind of problems and it's it's uh, typically easier to work with the commands for input actions than with using data ref so i'm going to save this configuration now and i also would like to take the opportunity to give you a little sneak peek preview of the ui that i'm having in the mix uh, that i'm about to release as a beta very very soon so let's take a look Okay, so to show you this uh, development version, I'm starting Visual Studio 2022 and I have to stop this uh, MobiFlight instance here. So let me open the MobiFlight connector project and then start a debug session. All 
right. That's saying there's a newer version available. That's actually not true. This one is the latest development version. Uh, let me open the configuration that we just uh, created, explain release example, and then we open the output config wizard. And then, wow, yeah, here, explain data ref, and this view looks a little bit different, but it looks very similar to the sim connect presets. So that's really, really cool. So we have also vendor aircraft system and the search option. Uh, as uh, for filtering then we have this drop down with all the presets that i imported from uh, the data ref uh, the data ref list that ships with explain we also have a little description area now that's pretty pretty cool and you can also take a look at the preset code um, and then if we run it everything is just working the same let's look at the input config wizard there we have uh, the similar view with vendor aircraft system and search uh, obviously i have to do a little work here so that everything is initialized correctly so this should be a command but yeah it's already working quite nicely and I'm sh pretty sure that I can release it very soon as a beta. So make sure that if you want to try it out, that you enable the beta uh, updates in your settings in MobiFlight. All right, we are at the end of this video tutorial and I hope you liked it. Everything that I showed you is also available as a tutorial on GitHub in our wiki section. Make sure you check that out and a big thank you to Thomas who helped me putting that together. And also, if you like these videos, please give it a thumbs up and uh, obviously subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to receive notifications. See you soon on the next video. And in the meantime, I wish everyone happy landing and a lot of fun with your MobiFlight cockpit.